You know God loves you today. He loves you so much, and I wanna encourage you with that. That is a good thing. If you're in warfare or you're battling something or you've had a rough day, a rough week, God loves you. God loves you. And if God is for you, who can be against you, amen? Sometimes you gotta just anchor yourself to the Word of God. Well, we're doing this series called Shadow Wars. We're excited to be a part of that. I'm excited to uh, continue that today. So you know you are in a spiritual war. You are in a combat zone, if you will. There are two kingdoms at work, and there is a clash of kingdoms going on, but greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. I want you to turn to the person next to you and just say, God loves you more. God loves you more. God loves you more. God loves you more than the devil's against you. God loves you more. The attack of the enemy is nothing to God, amen? It is nothing to his power. Sometimes we are... We, we fail to recognize that God and Satan are not equal opponents. Amen? 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 When God cast Satan out of heaven, he didn't even do it. He just spoke it. The angels went and threw him out. He was cast to the earth. And the Bible says he was like ashes and dust. He took on another form of a serpent, appeared to Adam and Eve because they were created in the glory and the image and the likeness of God. He hated them. He hated mankind. God loves you today. I love my grandkids. You love your family. You love your children. You just want to give them so much. Sometimes you have to say, don't do that now. That's not teaching them the right thing because you just want to give them everything, right? Make it easy and do it all for them. And that's how love is, right? It's just like, oh. And when Pastor and I travel or we have to be away from our children or away from you, our spiritual children that we love so much, we miss you. We carry you in our hearts. I carry my children in my hearts. I carry you in my heart. I carry those grandbabies in my heart. Amen. They make you grand, right? They make you grand. And eventually they make you great. <laughs> and it's awesome. It's wonderful. And I hate to leave them. Little Ivory says to me one day, she says, Grandmama, because she always wants to be with me every day. She's like, Grandmama, where do you go? <laughs> she says, like, she knows I disappear and I'm not going to be home. And she doesn't know why or where. So I said, I'm telling people about Jesus, but I'll be back on. And I tell her when I'll be back. And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, I love my grandchildren so much. It's hard to say no. It's hard to say no when you love. And let me just tell you, God doesn't want to say no to you either. He's saying yes, yes, yes. The Bible says his promises are yes. His promises are yes and amen. You say the amen. He says yes. I'm going to show you how much I love to say yes. When they get in my closet, they get in my things. I just can't say no. <laughs> So tell me, what are you making for my face today? Beautiful. Beautiful. I, did, I didn't know that this was coming up with you. So I was going to do your makeup, and then I started to do it. Are you happy with the results? Yep. Think I'm going to be happy with the results? Yep. Where would you wear this makeup to? Uh, California. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> no offense to you Californians, but she did figure this out. Wow, it kind of looked like I could be in a play. Maybe yeah. cats or something? Yeah. <laughs> I do your face mask. You did me a face mask? <laughs> yeah. So what do I look like? You look like a cat. I do look like a cat. Meow. You need, like, long whiskers. I need long whiskers? Yeah. Well, I pluck those off usually. <laughs> oh, my. I need this. You know why I would let you do this to my face? Why? Why do you think? I don't know. Because you're at a hairstyle place. Uh-huh, because I'm at your hairstyle place? Yeah. Why else do you think I'd let you do this? Because you're my grandma. That's right. And I love you. And I think you are amazing. <laughs> and you have big dreams inside you. And you're very creative. You're very creative. Oh, dear. Now I look like <laughs> Hitler. <laughs> uh, I think you're extremely creative. How do you think I'm going to get all this off of me? I don't know. Are you going to help me? No. I didn't think so. <laughs> Well, 
camera ready? <laughs> it's hard to say no to that sweet little face, right? <laughs> oh, she started out saying, Grandma, can we play hairstylist? And I was like, sure. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, she's going to brush my hair, which I absolutely love. I love to have my hair brushed. It feels so relaxing to me. And quickly, she goes over to the makeup drawer, drops the hairbrush, pulls out the makeup, and starts doing that. So anyway, I love her so much. I want to spend time with her. I want to say yes to her. When she gets the shoes in my closet and walks around the house and leaves them and makes a mess in the closet, I, I kind of go, oh, doggone it. Oh, I love her so much. <laughs> I think God does that with us. You know, the Bible says that he wants to give good gifts to us. James 1, 17 says, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He gives good gifts. You know, I was with her that week, and we also took uh, Polly shopping for her birthday, and Ivory was like, oh boy, we're going to go shopping. Can you buy me stuff? Can you buy me stuff? And I said, no, now we're going to buy mommy stuff. It's her birthday, but you've got a birthday coming up. What do you want for your birthday? And she said, well, Grandmama, I want some confetti pops. I said, okay. I didn't have any clue what that is, but I'll f figure it out, right? I'll find it. I'll go on Amazon or something. Anyway, <laughs> I'll find it. So we get to the store with Polly, and we're in the women's section and looking at clothes and different things. And wouldn't you know, she finds a confetti pop. It's right there in the women's section. And she says, Grandmama, will you buy this for me, please? Jesus, hit it here for me. <laughs> <laughs> now, what did I say? What do you think I said? <laughs> yes. Yes, I said, yes, it is my pleasure to give you the confetti pop. <laughs> and it is God, God's good pleasure to give you his kingdom, amen. There's scriptures that say God delights in the prosperity of those that serve him, those that love him, his children. He cares about you this morning. Turn to someone and say, God loves you more. Now let me tell you, God is a family man. He's a family man. He made you because he wanted a family. He had angels, seraphim, cherubim, all those things, all these creatures and creations to serve and they worshiped, but he wanted a family. And he created you in his likeness and his image. You are made in God's image. And he didn't put, you know how pastor was sharing with you how Satan was ordained with all those stones and all those timbrels and things coming out of him to worship. He didn't create you with all of those things. He took his very glory himself and crowned you with glory and honor and splendor made in his own image as his child. And that, let that sink in. That is amazing. That is amazing. And then he, everything you see, he gave you dominion over. He created this earth for you. Everything in it is under your dominion. But then Satan, he hates that. He hates God. He hates family. He hates marriage. He hates male and female. He hates any and everything God created because it reminds him of his rebellion. It reminds him of his destiny. And so what did Satan want to do? He wanted to steal the very thing that God desired, a family. And Satan would love to steal your family. He wants to still kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I've prayed for you that your faith fell not. Do you know Jesus is interceding for you and I? He's interceding for you. He took his blood and took care of all of our mess and our mistakes and our issues and all the junk in our life and had such great compassion for us. He was willing to lay his own life down. Satan took his life. He wanted to be able to, he took Satan, Satan took, tried to take Jesus' life from him and he took Adam and Eve's destiny from them, took their dominion from them took their authority from them, took their glory. They were stripped of the glory of God because the glory of God and sin and the presence of Satan cannot coexist. And so they were stripped of the glory of God. And because of them, the earth was cursed. And every man and woman and child that's been born since then has come under that earth curse when they were born. But praise be to God that Jesus was willing to take his blood, the second Adam. He was willing to go and shed his blood, let the enemy actually think that he was defeated in taking his life. But he took the precious blood that was pure and holy, 
put it on the mercy seat and seated with God and took the authority back over the earth, over you, over me, over the kingdom. And now he says, you're seated with him in heavenly places. Amen. So every morning you can get up, put on your glory suit. You get up and say, Father, I thank you for the glory of God that you've restored to me. I take on that. I will glorify you in this temple. Amen? I will glorify you with my thoughts, with my heart, with my actions. And I'm going to glorify you through this day because I'm seated with you. And then you can take authority over the enemy. Because the enemy, the Bible says that the enemy is under the feet of the footstool of Jesus. He's under your feet. He's under God's feet. And because he's under God's feet and he's under Jesus' feet and he seated you, he's under your feet. Amen? You're seated with him in heavenly places. But God's a family man. He loves you so much. Satan wants to pervert God's character. Every day he's accusing God to you, whether you realize it or not. He's making you think that when something bad happens, it came from God. God must be mad at you. God must be angry at you. God must have done this for you. Where is God? Why isn't God doing this? What did he say to Eve in the the garden? Did God really say? So you quote a scripture and the enemy immediately says, did God really mean that? Is God really going to heal your body? Does God really care about your family? Does Does God really care about your finances? And he begins to accuse you. And and he'll accuse those that come to you and speak the truth to you. He'll try to accuse your pastor. He'll try to accuse your church. He'll try to accuse your spouse. Because God created marriage. The enemy hates marriage. He hates that union. Because that union in Christ is designed to look like Adam and Eve in the garden. God wants to use your marriage. Hold it up to the world and say, this is what I created. Isn't it beautiful? Can you see why the enemy attacks family so much? Why it is the center focus of his hatred? Marriage and family, because it is the image of God. The Bible says that when a man lays his life down for his wife, it's like Christ laying his life down for the church. It models Christ to the world. And when a woman responds to that love and she praises and encourages and adores that man and she blesses him and speaks good over him and joins arms with him together side by side in life and they go together and they go forward in advancing God's kingdom, that is a picture of God and his love. That is a picture of God and the church. It is a picture of Christ. Satan hates that. That's why he attacks your marriage. He wants us to be self-centered and selfish and exert our will. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.